The Board of Elections will hold a regular board meeting of the members of the board on July 11th at 4 p.m. in the boardroom at the Mahoney County Board of Election Office at 345 Oak Hill Avenue, Youngstown, Ohio, 44502. I hereby call this meeting to order. Would the director call the roll, please? Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Attorney, Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Barker? Yes. Mr. Arndt? Yes. Would the vice chair lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Could we have a moment of silence, please, for our nation? All right, can I have a motion to approve the minutes of the June 6, 2023 regular board meeting and the June 20th, 2023 special board meeting? So moved. There's a motion made by Joyce Kale Pesta to um, accept uh, the uh, minutes from the June 6, 2023 regular board meeting and the June 20th. 2023 special <coughs> regular board meeting. Is there a second? No, sir. There's been a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would the director call the roll, please? Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. George? Yes. Okay, uh, will the chair now will recognize a motion to approve the bills of accounts and payment for May, June, and July of 2023. Make a motion to approve the accounts and payments for May, June, and July for $107,657.96. There's a motion made by Vice Chair Sandra Barger to approve the payment of expenses for May, June, and July of 2023 of $107,657.96. Is there a second? Second. There is a second. Is there any discussion? I have a question. <coughs> Two questions, actually. Uh, why is the Youngstown Letter Shop in even 10000 That seems like odd that it would come out exactly 10000 We're Don't you pull, fill a major for, through them? Yes. Like See where it says major? Youngstown yeah. Letter Shop? Yeah. Postage mailing 10000 did we pay that to them, or is that our meter that we just add money to? That's what we just add money to. Okay, and that's why it's an even 10000 mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, the elections, ES and S, mm -hmm. on the back, those are obligations pursuant to contracts we have already entered into, correct? Yes, except for the um, 17000 that was the portion that we had to pay for the 950 that will be reimbursed. Well, we get some of that in credit, but that was for that 950 scanner. Okay. Yeah. We I don't have take any, possession of. I don't have any other questions. And I like how you put the deputy's hours in there and how much, so that's really good. Thank you for doing that. For yes. Us. Uh, we'll tell Lorraine, because Lorraine did it upon your request. Really good. Okay. Uh, any more questions or comments? Hearing none, would the director call the roll, please? Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. Ms. Rogers? Yes. Hi. Uh, the Chairman's Report. We have to certify the validity and sufficiency of partisan candidates' petitions for the September 26, 2023 primary elections. And there is a, um, a sheet in, in closing the package of those candidates, uh, but the Board does need to take a look at three of those sets of petitions to make determinations. That would be the first ward, Campbell, Joseph Tvarnak, fourth ward, Bill Valentino. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Annie has just informed us for the bills. I thought Bob seconded it. Didn't you, Bob, second? Yes. Yes, yes he bobbed Bob's it. I, well, I, I have Bob him for the minutes, but he, he did second, second for the okay. bills, too. Okay. Sorry, you just really quiet. Yeah. 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 That's all right. Well, he's a quiet guy. Are you sure? That's the question. Are you asking? All right. Why don't we approve the ones where there's no problems? Okay. And then we'll look at the other one. So which 
tell us which candidates have no problems and we'll take a motion to accept all of those. We're going to approve today in Campbell, Mayor Brian Tedesco, the Director of Law, Van Creamy Gus Matthews, Council President George Lavindus, First Ward Council Tim O'Brien, Second Ward Council Stephen Capiti, Third Ward Council Joseph Mazzocco Jr., and in Sebring, Mayor, President of Council, David L. Wright. For Member of Council 2, elect that large, Nathan Kaufman and Robert Rouse. All right, is there a motion to accept, without any discussion or without voting on anything, uh, Mayor Brian Tedesco, Director of Law Lamprini Gus Matthews, Council President George Lavindus, First Ward in Campbell Tim O'Brien, Second Ward, Steve Capetti. Third Ward, Joseph Masako. And in Sebring, Mayor, President of Council, David Wright. And for uh, a council at large, I guess it is, or for two council right. people, Nathaniel uh, Kaufman and Rob Rouse. Is there a motion? So moved. There's a motion made by Vice Chair Sandra Barger. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Joyce Kalepesta. Is there any discussion on the ones we're approving that our staff said were good petitions? Hearing none, would the director call the roll? Ms. Kalepesta? Yes. Attorney Petrus? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. Mr. Arch? Yes. Okay. Now, let's look at uh, Joseph Tavarnak's petition and let's talk about that. Sure. He needed 25 signatures. He had enough signatures. Two parts petition, but he failed to sign the petitions, which is a fatal error. Beautiful. It's um, always has been. It's very clear in the directives and revised code. You have to sign your petition prior to circulation. Yeah, that's. Uh, I agree. Is there a motion to? Here, I'll let you guys look at that. He didn't sign it. The uh, member, Joyce Kalepesta, makes a motion to disallow Joseph Tavarnak. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Vice Chair Sandy Barger. Is there any discussions? Uh, uh, you, you've got to. The bar is really, really low. All you have to do is sign the petition. I, I don't know what else to do. It's so frustrating that we are we are disqualifying someone because they can't follow the simple directions of signing their petition. So, I mean, it's a fatal flaw. I don't think we have much discretion on that. Any other discussion? Would the director call the roll, please? Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. Ms. Arch? Yeah. All right, now let's go to the fourth ward, Bill Valentino. What's... Uh, William Valentino filed for fourth ward council on three part petitions. He had enough signatures. Um, but we do have a copy of the uh, city charter. Uh, Campbell is a charter city. It states pretty clearly that you have to be a resident of two years within the city immediately proceeding. We have his registration. He uh, filled out a new form September 10th, 2022, a year ago. And so he doesn't meet the qualifications. Where was he charter. registered before this? Um, I can, is it on there or not? Usually they put the old address there too. Yeah, I can find out, but it wasn't Campbell. It wasn't Campbell? Oh, it wasn't Campbell, it doesn't matter. Yeah, was it Campbell? We gotta check that. Yeah. Checking that we had a motion in a second, right? Or do we not? No, we have. All right, let's have a motion, and then we can get into a discussion. Is there a motion to disqualify uh, Bill Valentino's uh, petitions? So moved. There is a motion made by Vice Chair Member uh, Sandra Barger. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Seconded by Bob Arndt. Is there a discussion? So, here I, I want to say something. 
if you didn't live in Mahoning County and you filed in Mahoning County, you could, we would we would disallow that petition. Uh, it's the same thing here. I mean, Correct. But the charter states also that it has to be a two-year residence. Yeah. So they're checking to see if he lived in Camel prior to prior to the what you have yeah. in your hand. Is the the charter state has to be a resident. Qualified elector of the municipality. Of the municipality. The way I read this is as long as he lived in Camel, he's good. Right. It right. doesn't say in that award. Right. Yeah, or annexed territory. So if Camel annexed any territory, as long as he was there two years, he's good. There's no way to tell whether this was because he moved late. No, they'll tell they'll get to pull the registration. Right. Be but this tell. this one page doesn't tell us no. other than this is where his current other yeah, we just want to make sure he didn't move from one address yeah, in Campbell. Right. Yeah. But I want to make sure he didn't move from one residence in Campbell to another right. residence in Campbell. I'm sure he probably did move one body, he just didn't print the other screen. Well let's just check yeah. it. Yeah. I'm gonna apologize. He did live in Campbell but in a different ward. Well, so the, had a different, I just, I okay. so the way I read this, I think he's good. Yeah. Because each member of council shall be a qualified elector of the municipality and shall have resided therein or in a territory annexed thereto for a period of two years. I think he's. I think he's good. I apologize. I think he's good. I'm glad yeah, I had you check. I'm so glad you had me check. Because <laughs> yeah, the other one was March of 21. So March of 23, he would qualify yeah. for the camel. Well, wait a minute, we just voted down. Wait, there's a motion, yeah. and so we would then vote down the motion and then re uh, put a motion on yeah. to. Oh, would to, you say no? Yeah, would, would the director call the roll, please? Ms. Calpesta? No. Attorney Beatrice? No, on the current motion on the floor. Ms. Barger? No. Ms. Arch? No. All right, now that we've had the director check the uh, prior address, it looks like he, Bill Valentino is, in fact, qualified. So we would, I'd ask for a motion to approve his petitions. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, uh, member Joyce Kale Pessa made a motion, and member Bob Arndt seconded it. Is there any discussion beyond what we already had? Hearing none, the way I read this charter, is if he's in the, it doesn't say ward, it just says in the municipality. I read the same way and I apologize. That's all right. So I, I, think, he, I think he's good. Is there a motion? Uh, we, we, we did that. We just. All right. Uh, so let's, we did a motion to approve him? Yes. Correct. Okay. Uh, would the director call the roll? Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. Ms. Arch? Yes. All right. Betty Householder? Uh, Betty's running for the council at large in Sebring. Uh, sufficient signatures, but she failed to fill in the, the whole front of the form, um, the bottom section of the non -day petition, the non -day petition form. Uh, my position on this, well, we got to have a motion to approve or not approve. So, what's what's the board? After everyone looks at right. it, we'll let the board make a motion and then we'll she discuss it. Out, but she didn't do the nominating petition. Correct. She did it on the top here, though. See yeah. This? So the, this information here. is the same as this information. Well, yeah, but she shrunk the form down a bit and they have eight and a half by 11, so that's why it's there. I think it's substantial compliance. Every petition form we have, Sandy, the petition center start on the front of the form. That's Sandy's correct. But, but it's a petition. What? Are they both nominating petitions? There's the bottom of the nominating petition, and the top is a certificate of nomination. Well, no, I this, think it's a nominating the, petition. She filled in the part that says statement of candidacy, but she did not fill in the nominating petition part of it. My, my position on that is, is that it's substantial compliance. That it, it, 
first of all, they don't have to use our forms. They could do whatever form. It's a nominating petition and statement of candidacy. And so her statement of, what, what, here are the two arguments. What Sandra is proposing is that she properly fill out the statement of candidacy, but she did not properly fill out the nominating petition. The other side of it is, is if you look at it as one document, the nominating petition and statement of candidacy is, is basically the same form. You're just reiterating. What's it um, the side that you did not fill out is the side where the signatures have to appear underneath that. If that's not filled out, you're not really I just compliant. noticed something. Oh, that's sketchy. Yeah. Well, you I've her. never seen that before. She taped this onto here. I've never seen that before. I've never I've seen, seen that before. Never Sandy. Seen that. Never seen that. This a, one doesn't have it, and that one doesn't have it. But does she one. have enough signatures? We'd have to recount those. And was that what was the total? I mean, this is a spoilation of a. How many does she need? Yeah. Petition? yeah. Well, she had um, 51 valid, so if you take these, oh, she's going back too. Yeah, she doesn't have enough, I don't think. You have to disqualify the whole petition. You do. I mean, yeah, this that's, this is that's fraudulent. Yeah, you can't do this. You can't tape something on something. And where does she get her from? I don't know. You know what I mean? The point is, yeah, there's nothing down here on the real petition. I don't know which one's the real. petition. I thought it was something sticking together. When you were pulling it, Sandy, I thought it was something. So this is the real petition. Well, then this is this is the one that's taped on on the back. So it whatever like it she is, that or because she spilled that. something on there and didn't want it to. Yeah, the, yeah, that's the part that's taped on. If we took this piece off, the petition is all one page. See this? Yeah, but because she probably spilled something, yeah. couldn't read it. That's why and she they couldn't did that. write on it. So it's still like. They wrote on the spoil part, but she didn't write here. She could have wrote here. I don't think we should allow people to tape stuff onto a petition. That is a little dangerous. She needed 50. Without that petition, she wouldn't have 50. I don't know. Our lawyers left, right? Yeah. But this looks like a spoilation of a petition. Like, how do we know when she taped it? When she taped it. Didn't she take this off another? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Right. I've never, in all the years I've been here, I've never, never seen, seen this. I've never seen that. Have you ever seen that? No, I looked at that thing four times like last Sandy time. Sandy caught it. Because it was sticking Nothing gets by it. Sandy. It was sticking together. I'm like, yeah. When you're doing that, I'm like, what's she doing? And then all of a sudden, I'm like, my God, I've never seen that. Well, I thought it was brave because I tried not to touch sticky stuff. <laughs> well, uh, is there a motion to, I, I, my position would be that we disqualified. If she wants to bring a lawyer in and, and ask us to reconsider, fine. But I've never seen anyone. Do you, do you have any help for us? That's, I've never seen that. I've never seen that. I know an email. What? I can always send an email. Well, I think we just it. disallow it, and then she can she can petition for reconsideration. Yeah, like Is everyone that. sort of? I'm not part of All right, uh, let's take a motion to disallow Betty Householders. Uh, is it on one grounds or two, Sandra? I would do two. Okay, so you want to put that in your motion? Yeah, make the motion to disqualify um, Betty Householder first for um, not filling out the bottom part of the nominating petition. And then taping the uh, nominating petition Ultra. certification of the diligent ballot. I mean, it's a spoilation of. Uh, I would I would consider this for the record, because the record is being taken. This is a spoilation of a petition. She taped something to the petition. There is nothing in the law that allows you to tape something to a petition. And for spoilization of the petition. Yeah. Uh, there's a motion made by. Vice Chair Sandra Barger, is there a second? Second. Seconded by Member Joyce Kale Pesta. Um, is there any discussion more than what we discussed? All I want to say is, in all of the years that I've sat on this board, in all of the nominating petitions I have reviewed, 
I have never seen someone tape something to a petition. And to me, that's a very dangerous precedent to set if we're going to allow people to start taping things to a petition. I would consider this whole petition not valid. Um, and so uh, I would ask the director to call the roll. Ms. Del Testa? Yes. Attorney Dave Petrus? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. Ms. Robert? Yes. All right. Let's get back to the agenda now. Uh, the director's report. Well, we're busy getting ready for this August special. The good news is all our phone locations are accounted for. Nothing has changed. So everything we use in the primary, we're using in August. And most counties can't say that. So we got lucky there. We're basically full on our poll workers. And that's good news. That's good news. Most Republicans and Democrats. I think we were four short on Republicans, which is nothing. I think Jenny was even again. Yeah, so she lost two yesterday and gained them right back. Yeah. And so they're doing a good job there. And it's been brisk here, they said. I voted already. I got here early and voted. As a, I did an interview with Ted at 12.30. We were 120 voters already. And that was more than we did in the first two weeks combined last August. Wow. So very brisk. I was the first voter today. Right? <laughs> um, so everything's going well. We're, we're prepared for August. But we're also checking 18,000 signatures off state petitions. So we're trying to balance both. We're about 2,000 signatures in so far we've checked. So that's a 12 day, it takes about 12 days. And we're going to be working late nights and probably Saturday, Sunday this week to finish those signatures. All right. Yeah. Can I go back to something, Tom, that yeah. we've talked about? We talked about the Camel and Sebring because we discussed it as a primary. But because there's nobody running against each other, we don't have a September 26th primary. That's correct. Both uh, Sebring and Campbell call for a, a September election. It's the uh, fourth Tuesday of September. But since there's no, you have to have two plus one. So if there's a, a single Unless one, someone files as a write-in in the fourth ward. Right, then we would have to push this into a write-in. Only, Only for the fourth ward. He's fourth okay. Fourth ward, right. he's no, he's good now. Yeah. Right, he's good now, right. Yeah. So there would be, you're right, there is no election. We, yeah. We should probably let the probably put a press release out. Okay. If if you or Melissa could do that, so people aren't confused. They hear there's election, but then when they go to election day, there's no election because there's nothing to vote for, right? Yeah, this, we haven't had a Campbell right. primary, primary since years. Yeah, years. Two thousand. Yeah. Yeah. you think if we do it? Release, they might mix it up I wouldn't do it correct. No, I wouldn't Can do it correct. Because after after all of this will switch to the November election. Right. Correct? Yeah, it's been 15, 20 years since we had any primary job. Okay. Years. All right. Good, good catch, Sandra. When I read the email, I'm thinking, we have another primary coming up? Like, where did that appear? You should have seen me. Right. I was like, well, hold on. That's <laughs> <laughs> No, just that we sent ballots out today, our first... Um, How many went out? Um, a little more than 500. Okay. Which is more than, two, was it two years ago? Or one year ago? Last year. Last, year. Last, year. Yeah. Last August. Yeah. That was from... What do you predict our turnout will be? More than 8%? Less than 20%. Frank Rose was quoted in the paper yesterday that he wouldn't be shocked that we're still around 10%. It was 8% statewide last August. We were 10%. We're saying maybe 15 to 20 percent. We're kind of we're going to base off the first week or week and a half of absentees and early voting, then kind of figure out where we're at. I'd say probably about 20 right now, which. All right. I just want people to know, in the highways and byways, that when you don't vote, you vote. Right. You are voting by not voting. That people what that's what people don't realize. I hear people saying that one vote doesn't matter. Well, when you don't vote, you're actually voting. You're giving someone else your voice. So, all right, uh, unfinished business. Any unfinished business? I don't think we do. All right, new business. Update pay scale per commissioner's resolution. I've read it. I agree with it. And we'll accept the motion for it and we'll discuss it. Joyce Kale Pesta, member uh, Joyce Kale Pesta, moves to where, where is that? Oh, moves to adopt 
the update pay scale per commissioner's resolution. Is there a second? I'll second. It's seconded by Vice Chair Sandra Barger. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would the director call the roll? Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Attorney Dave Petras? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. Ms. George? Yes. All right, we need to approve the vacation pay for Danielle O'Neill. Is there a motion? No moved. There's a motion made by Joyce Kilpesta. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bob Arnn. Is there any discussion? The only thing I want to say is when we pass policies, they're not, they've got to make it into the policy manual. So, Annie, would you make sure that that makes it into the policy manual somewhere? And if you could go back and any policy changes we made, um, make sure they make it into the manual. We're going to put that on you, okay? I think it is in the personal. Since there's not enough on me. <laughs> you know what? She'll take care of it. You know what? You want to get something done, give it to a busy person. Because they'll make sure it gets done. And Annie is a superstar. And she's married. Mrs. Dominic. Mrs. Dominic. So you have to get used to saying Mrs. Dominic. Mrs. Donovan. Yes. All right. Okay, so now we're back to the Danielle. Yes. Is there uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, would the director call the roll? Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. Ms. Arch? Yes. All right. Uh, software uh, and equipment updates. <coughs> Who wants to go take that? Um, I'll do that. That's just a brief update for you on our election night reporting. We're hoping to have it for August, which is where they could go online and see what's going on with the election. Um, going back and forth with the contract, it takes time. We're hoping for August, but if not, it'll be November. Um, we sent some data over to Knowing, which oversees that, and whether they can start building our website, and we may be on time for August at their goal. Right. That's, oh, and then the poll books, because Joyce, I know you always ask. Yes, I do. We did get some quotes and things, but we have not moved forward with it because we've been so busy um, with what we're currently working on. But we started gathering information about the different e-poll books so that we could see where we want to go with that. Well, we I don't did. think it'll be in for November anyway. I think it'll be next year. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah for sure. But we, I just wanted to let you know so you know we have not done. That's not by the way, so we're, we're gathering data. The 950 scanner, we have it, it's up and running, we'll be able to use it this election, and we've traded back the 850, that's what you saw, the right. 17,000 for. Yeah. Is there any equipment to software the election? No, we're still playing at row keys for the, the reporting. Yeah, that's the, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah that's all we Yeah. yeah. Um, is the yes and that, or is that one going to be able to, this, this coming election, or in November, give us the update of how many poll books are open, how many this, how many that? Should they do it with the old machines? They, yeah, it's going to need a software upgrade to okay. do it. So. Okay, well, we're going to have to get that anyway if we get new machines. Yeah, that's correct. Keith but, Cunningham was going to submit a proposal to us okay. on that. That is really a nice tool. But wouldn't that only be if we buy their brand? We upgrade our, we could upgrade our poll books with the same company, and they did send us a quote, and PollSync was in there, which is, and then the software was in there as well. Is that is that right? Because we wouldn't right. go with that software. Just so the board members know, when we first bought these poll books, we were able to go online during the course of the day to see what poll books were online or offline. Okay. We could also track turnout in real time. So we would tell you we're at 8%, we're at 9%. And we could tell you who was voting, who wasn't. So I could tell you how Dave Beach just voted at 1130, Sandy hasn't voted yet. The Secretary of State, because of security concerns, stopped that. Okay. But our vendor, now, sir, how can we do that again? And we can get that back up and running. Because it was a really nice feature. They added the yeah. security features so that we're allowed to do it. It still doesn't have that. So it doesn't we, yeah, we can track balance used. It's, it's a really nice yeah. feature. It's one of the reasons we bought that system. Yeah. And you yeah. think it'll be ready for the. It's ready now. But Dinah's County is using it, so is uh, Lorraine County is using it already. Right. But then, do we have to stay with that poll book vendor to get that? No, the other vendors are offering that as well. So it would be? Right, but you have to buy new equipment. So you don't be buying new equipment that upgrade with the same vendor as sole source? Correct. All right. Uh, we'll take a motion to accept the resignation of 
Uh, Diane Raptus, effective July 11th, 2023. Is there a motion? So moved. There's a motion made by Vice Chair Sandra Barger. Is there a second? Second. Seconded by Bob Arndt. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would the director call the roll, please? Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. Ms. Rogers? Yes. And now we have to approve the hiring of a new Mahoney County Board of Election clerk. Is there a motion? I would like to move that we hire Sue Kennedy, who has been working in our warehouse for years with a Democrat, give us the opportunity to have another Democrat in the warehouse. And she is an excellent employee, and I think she would serve this board well. There's a motion made, and it was seconded. And Joyce laid out a reason as to why we need it. Is there any other discussion? Hearing none, would the director call the roll? Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. Ms. Arch? Yes. Anything for good of the order or public comments? Hearing none, the next scheduled adjourned board meeting is set for Monday, August 7, 2023 at 6 p.m. in the boardroom of the Mahoney County Board of Elections Office at 345 Oak Hill Avenue, Youngstown, Ohio. Set to adjourn on Tuesday, August 8th, after the close of the polls, collection, tabulations, and release of the unofficial special election vote total results. It, it is a mouthful. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. There's a motion made by member of Joyce Calpesta to adjourn. Is there a second? I'll second. Seconded by Vice Chair Sandra Barger. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, would the director call the roll? Ms. Calpesta? Yes. Attorney Beatrice? Yes. Ms. Barger? Yes. Ms. Rogers? Yeah. Yeah. Meeting is adjourned.